So good evening, everyone. So welcome back, Dr. Gulani. Uh, I guess you need no introduction in this forum because you've been a star speaker on uh, pterygium surgeries uh, uh, last week, and uh, uh, you left us all addicted towards achieving a perfect vision. And it was very interesting. Anyways, for the benefit of the new participants, uh, so today we have with us Dr. Gulani, who's a world-renowned uh, classic cataract and corneal surgeon. Uh, not only does he go beyond the routine LASIKs and cataracts, he's also a world destination uh, for second opinions and complication correction uh, for a global client clientele. And it's, he's also a consultant for many of the eye surgeons and the entire eye care industry. So we are very lucky to have him uh, talk on this special topic, uh, Stop the Train Wreck, uh, Taking Complex and Complicated to Premium Vision. So welcome back, Dr. Gulani. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much again for having me. It's a pleasure being back. Um, I must say I'm very intrigued uh, among so many webinars. We were overwhelmed with the amount of questions and interest. So what I've done today for you, a lot of you had many questions from pterygium to refractive to complicated cataract cases. Today, I'm going to show you something that's close to my heart is uh, attitude and addiction, like you rightly said. And I would like to keep it a little more interactive. So I'll go through cases in different scenarios. And then I'll even pause and you are more than welcome to present your most difficult case. Present doesn't need to be formal. You can just say, Doc, I had this patient with 30 card RK and nine diopter astigmatism and what would you do? So I'd like to keep it interactive and we'll stay on time then. All right, so with that, uh, let's start. All right, here we are. Should be seeing my screen now. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, lovely. John, how are you? Doing fine, sir. Wonderful. Excellent. So we start now. Uh, my main thing is, uh, I like to say this all the time, is I don't even believe in calling any case a wreck, nightmare, complications, but I'm using these words just to make sure we communicate uh, in the most common way we can. So, and if you notice the title, please stop and notice the title. It's not about stop the train wreck, it's about stop it, meaning take this difficult, complex cases, whatever you call them, take it to 2020, no excuses. Uh, very important, as I keep saying to you, get addicted to your patient's smiles and the way they appreciate your fight for their vision. So all these are cases that are seeing 2020. Uh, this is the next day post-op, patients from 11 countries, uh, nine states. And you can see over here on top, you can see all the cases and what you would call a train wreck, but it's not so. Uh, we just spoke about this before starting. These are my social handles. Uh, so please don't panic. I'll show you some videos. A lot of them my team is building on our YouTube and Instagram so you can see it after we are done. So take a note of all these uh, handles and I'll send them to you again later. Um, you can follow over there and we are building in a complete library of surgeries of all kinds for your pleasure. Uh, some of you may have seen this uh, as I was talking about it. I want you to understand how I think. I do not get hung up on topography. I do not get hung up on OCT. I do not get hung up on anything that takes away my fight. Meaning I neglect the fact that the patient is difficult and I go straight to planning. So let's look at this case. This is a, a patient again, got into a lawsuit with his a very excellent, brilliant surgeon, but the doctor had done cataract, premium cataract surgery in a case of keratoconus and landed with hyperopia, high keratometry, central anterior central scar, and also did a YAG capsulotomy. So now you have a lens, bag is open, Patient is hyperopic, so he's miserable because he can't see distance on air. And basically, he's very angry with his outcome. So question to any of you uh, within less than a minute, please. What would you do? Anybody? I see lots of people here. Come on, John, what would you do? Refer the case to you, sir. <laughs> All right. So the point of showing these cases and starting off this way is I want to show you my mindset. My mindset is I need a surgery. What I do is I don't think from surgery or technology point of view. I think from patient's vision point of view and I walk backwards 
to my kitchen and pick up my ingredients and then perform the vision recipe. So when I look at this patient, the only surgery I want here among all my 45 techniques and unlimited combinations is a myopic surface laser technique. So that will remove the scar, decrease the keratometry, smoothen the cornea and take him to emetropia. My problem is how do I take him to myopic surgery if he's hyperopic? So when I sit down with such a patient, when they've flown into me, they're very angry with their doctor. I immediately am discussing what I want and they become your team. They forget their anger to the surgeon and start becoming, yes, doc, how will you do this? So I say, Mr. Smith, how do I make you myopic? That's my dilemma here. Rest I can handle. And they become your team. And now they're excited. How are you going to make them myopic? Now, what I did, because he's a deep chamber, keratoconus, everything, I put on a piggy back lens. Made him myopic, leaves his astigmatism, anterior scar, and high case. Come back a month to six weeks later, once he's stable, do a myopic laser surgery, myopic astigmatism, surface surgery, straight to 2015 vision, and the patient gets his pilot's license. My point, again, you see, I did not think about pull the lens out, play with the vitreous, fool around with things. You, if you deprive them of 2020, I'm not happy. I don't want to know about the surgery. That's again, a thought process I want you to remember as we go forward. Now, like I said before, complication of any refractive or keratorefractive or premium cataract surgery, correction is also a refractive surgery. So let's think 2020. Here's another patient, 8.9 diopter astigmatism, only seeing eye, herpes scar, in a patient who knows everybody in the world of ophthalmology. He was one of the top shots for um, the Bosch and Lam company, knows everybody in the world, flew everywhere. Everybody said transplant and we will not do it for you because it's herpes and this is your only eye. What if you sue us? Very young man with three kids, uh, late forties. So what would you do? When I look at this patient again, I want you to figure and look at this and remember this for life. I refract every patient personally. Absolutely, and that's the biggest reason I feel of zero retreatments and impacts even in scars. And I want you not to look at the scar. I say this in a very strong way. In RK, I don't want you to look at the RK cuts. In scars, I don't want you to look at scar. Don't get scared, refract the patient. So I start refracting. You can see me here. R H. Can you hear? K S D. Love it, Bob, love it. That's... Can you all hear? <clears throat> yeah, we can hear you. So see me struggling. I'm refracting him oh, to a dense it central scar. Yes. Fantastic. That's my goal now. He could see up to 2040 when I refracted through a scar because nobody else cared to refract him. They just saw the topography, got scared. They saw his only seeing eye, got scared. They saw that herpes was the cause of the scar, got scared. And they looked at him. He knows everybody in the world of ophthalmology, got scared. Please keep those things aside fight. This young man needs your help. Yes, you can do a transplant. Takes 22 minutes. You will destroy his life. Don't want that. Do a technique with the laser. And here we are. Here he is. You can see the cornea pre and post-op. And you can see the young man. He's back to his life with his only seeing eye. Tremendous pictures he keeps sending me every time he comes back. And he drives all the way now to see me. It's a pleasure. His whole independence is back. And he's 20-20 vision. And one more thing I'm pointing out here, if you look on top, his topography astigmatism has only come to 8.4 from 8.9. You care a damn. Topography doesn't correlate to vision. These are another series I'll do for you later, myth busters. There's no such thing as topo guided LASIK, completely wrong. So you can see despite the topography, cornea is crystal clear, patient is thrilled. Remember he was one-eyed, herpes and ophthalmology scenario. Here is his post-op. Topography I don't even look at, but that's just for you. Now, some of you may have seen this. I'm again showing you a case first to show you how strongly I think, and then we proceed to concepts. Here's a patient with nine surgical complications following hexagonal keratotomy. Many of you have seen some hexagonal keratotomy cases. Yes? You see the cornea gets central, a central island of instability happens because all these cuts causes severe astigmatism and the cornea keeps fluctuating all the time. So this patient had fuchs, hexagonal keratotomy, scarring, um, high keratom uh, keratometry in the 89s, I think, and the astigmatism is 23.5, and um, posterior subcapsular cataract, exophthalmos, thyroid, and amblyopia, and given up for 60 years. Nobody looked at her. And her sons brought her to me, uh, attorneys and surgeons, they brought her to me. 
And again, I start refracting, I start planning. So first thing I did is I took intex and I put it around the hex case to stabilize my cornea and make the island more non-fluctuating, if you may, and measurable. Because my final aim, remember here, is to get inside the eye and do the cataract surgery. But you cannot do cataract surgery if you haven't stabilized and made the cornea measurable. So that's improper. That's a crime. You cannot do cataract surgery with inaccurate measurements. So putting in the intacts, we got the astigmatism from 23.5 to 1.4 and measurable. I made a wait for about three months, kept on measuring, measuring, and then with full confidence, went with the toric lens, brought it to 2020 vision. I'll show you this video because I want you to understand not just the surgery, what's in my mind. Even though I looked through the nine complications and no one had touched her and this patient, again, sons are doctors, uh, attorneys, doesn't matter. Your focus doesn't change. Here's a video for you. This is a 75-year-old nurse who was referring to me following hexagonal keratotomy with corneal ectasia. Vision of Can we hear can, you? Dr. Bulani, yeah. So the, uh, the audio in the video is uh, very low. Keratometry of 88 it higher regular. Yeah, it's good now. Five. I planned first to stabilize and make her cornea measurable. Go back, very I old old nurse. The this is a 75-year-old nurse who was referred to me following... Yes, it's perfect. Corneal ectasia, vision of crown fingers only, and Fuchs dystrophy along with associated cataract and high keratometry of 88 with high irregular astigmatism of 23.5. I planned first to stabilize and make her cornea measurable in think for future cataract surgery. Here I'm using intacts, and as you can see me, I'm using her own corneal resistance to guide my intact rings in place. I'm doing this without any sharp intervention so I don't make mistakenly any incision that can go into the hexagonal keratotomy guts and perforate the corneal. Very risky, I'm Again, right at the edge of the hex. Determined yet very careful movements of the ring, and I'm placing them so as to embrace this central unstable island. The success of this is immediately reflected in the central light reflex, if you notice, which is becoming more and more circular. See and I reflex? call this the titratable uh, concept of intact surgery. Notice again, the light reflex is now a perfect circle. I'm That's extremely pleased sees. to the point that I confidently cross-link. This success is reflected in topography from 23.5 to 1.4 diopter astigmatism. Patient extremely happy, comes dressed next day to meet me four months after determining stability of this cornea so we can determine accurate cataract surgery. We proceed here, dry pan blue for the observing surgeons, viscoelastic exchange. I plan my capsular excess to be a smaller size so I can see the edges between the hex cake cuts and the intact reflections, and also to maintain a good lens and capsular diaphragm. I now proceed with what we call phacoplastic, which is doing cataract surgery also in determined steps. Like you see, my phaco probe is not moving. It stays in one place while my second hand does most of the movement to maintain a stable incision, similarly with the IA and lens insertion here. Lens is now being placed in the bag and then gently moved into its axis. Again, irrigation aspiration, well-sealed incision, further uh, reinforced with reshore sealant, no stitch to induce any astigmatism, so here we have taken a patient who was denied her vision for 60 years. In two few minutes surgeries, four months apart, we have restored her vision and her confidence to give her back her life where she's come back to nursing and helping other patients. Here she is immediately after surgery, and here is my payback, seeing them smile Without and process. free to lead their life and help others. Once again, thank you for your attention. I'll stop here for a minute. Anybody, any questions? What I wanted to stress here is the attitude. Her number of complications and complexity does not matter. That she was told no for 60 years does not matter. I still want it 2020. I don't care what obstacles are in my way. There was no textbook as usual. None of my cases every day that I do these cases, no textbook describes this. But if you see, it's so simple. All of you can do it. Everybody knows how to put an intact Kera ring, uh, any of Ferrara ring, anything. Anybody knows how to do cataract. So the beauty of this webinar, because all of you are so experienced surgeons is, I just want to push on the thought process. Do not give up. In fact, do not just stop, I say again, stop the train wreck. So here she is doing brilliant. And again, if you see all my videos, all my work, I show my patients. It's a very profound statement I'm making, which is going to be a paradigm shift. Do not, I don't even look at statistics and people's scattergrams and 
surgeries, with scattergrams, it doesn't matter. You can fudge those things. You cannot fool around with a patient on camera. So if you cannot show me your patient on camera, smiling and thankful, the surgery doesn't matter. I don't want to see it. This patient today, look at her smiling, thrilled, looking beautiful after 60 years. She said she could finally see her face. She used to see a white blob in the mirror. So you can imagine her confidence. She's now become a nurse. That's the addiction. That's what I want you to constantly look at. And these cases, what I call is, I call these cases, I'm going to take you to Paris, Miss Smith. But first we go through Iceland. For me, the Iceland was the intact part. So remember, you have to be confident to take off and land twice. And you better not make a mistake because if they don't reach to Paris, you failed in their eyes. So this is that concept. Now, I went through this briefly with you at the last webinar I did. Clear system is my way of teaching 40 keratorefractive lenticular procedures and unlimited combinations so you become a master chef. You're never subjugated or slave to any one procedure. People say I do LASIK, cornea, cataract. No, you are all vision corrective surgeons. Clear is keratolenticular lenticular extended armamentarium system. Then you blur your blondies with the clear system because I don't want you to call yourself a limited surgeon. Of course, a lot of, lot of doctors work under this concept that they feel limited with technology. There is no such thing. Be a master chef. If you see right here, how many techniques and unlimited permutations, then your confidence goes up. When you walk back to your kitchen, you look at the ingredients on your shelf, pick the right thing. Therefore, there should never be a conference on what would you do, doctor, and what would you do, doctor. There is no such thing. You don't give options to patients, you give them a plan. And the plan comes because you're thinking from the patient's point of view. The confusion for majority of doctors I see is they have meetings on meetings on, I would have done this and I would have done this. Therefore, patients are confused. Which lens do you want for cataract, platinum, gold, or garbage? So patients get very confused. Completely wrong concept. Look at the patient, plan the anatomy, physiology, optics. There'll be only one choice then. So everybody is a candidate. This is a very, very important point. This is what I call my 3T system. 3T system is I always look at target first. What vision do I want? I walk back and pick my technique and then I pick my technology. So, so you see, I actually go the correct way I call this. Most people always look at technology. How do I use my femto laser? Can I apply this new thing I've learned wrong? What does the patient deserve? Pick that thing up. So that's technology. Think 2020. First of all, I want you to absorb this slide into your brain. Each of these patients are seeing 2020. And when I say 2020, I never mean glasses. And none of them had any interventional surgery other than my laser techniques and stuff that we'll go through. So absorb this slide, please. Each of this patient is seeing 2020. My SCAR algorithm, many of you know my 5S system. This is how my brain works. I refract 100% of my patients. Even if you bring me a patient with a dagger in their knife, I will start with my streak retinoscope. I have every technology in the world, some of which most of the world hasn't even seen. Guess what I go in, into the room with? Streak retinoscope. So I say this very loudly. A refractive surgeon must know how to refract. So when these patients land from all over the world, they're accompanied by their surgeons. They are blown away that I spent 20, 30 minutes sweating, even in a fully scarred case, trying to get my number. So that's the protocol right there. So that's your scar, Emily. Here's another patient of the dense scar, scar, the center of the cornea. Yeah, right in the center. But here we I are. I've given up. Let's People saying transplant, it. young girl, full Experience life in front of her. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I'm doing and you'll be surprised these patients this. actually see. see. if you can read anything at all. So you can Come see on, now. Give me the smallest slide, please. See. Can you believe it? She has the central scar and she's reading. Can you imagine she's seeing through that scar? Give me more. And these are doctors watching while I'm doing this. So Laura. Remember this part, please. You have to do it. Nine, ten. Can you believe it? Fantastic. Eleven, twelve. This one. Any more? See how strong she is. She's not guessing. And she was also brought to 2020 with laser, but important for me to show you. How I don't give up the refraction. Is very, then we make my very day. Important. You're looking through a central scar and you can read. NVD. Can you believe this? Okay. You saw the scar. <laughs> so this is her, this patient with the scar, high astigmatism, everything. Again, topography not important in these cases. 6.9, if you look up to the screen, 6.9 irregular astigmatism brought her to this situation. Look at the remaining scar, doesn't matter. The front curvature being Perfect is what's the game, what's the trick that I've been using for 28 years. So never do PTK. PTK is a wrong concept. You're removing the scar, damaging the shape. Vision doesn't improve. And going straight to refractive laser surgery, 
You shape the scar. Side effect is you might debulk it, which is a side effect, welcome side effect. I don't care about the scar. I want the shape. And that brings these patients to vision. So this concept, please remember, I repeat, PTK, completely wrong concept because you're removing the scar, damaging the shape, resulting in poor vision or hyperopia, which is wrong. Go straight to refractive laser and bring these patients to vision. The topography may still look horrible. The scar in the center is still there. Doesn't matter. These people actually see 2020. So please don't forget this concept. So this is a scar concept. This is what I call inconia scar, which becomes a refraction. You can see these patients. And here's another patient I want to share again with you, attitude. This patient had a traumatic corneal scar with seven adaptive astigmatism. You can see in the center. Young man. And guess what his profession is? He's a professional uh, weightlifter, bodybuilder. So you cannot do case surgery like transplants and stuff in them. Don't weaken them. Young man. So here's what we did. Straight with laser. And you can see over here. This is the next day this guy sends me this video. And I was very angry with them. Lifting weights. Can this guy have a transplant? So patients become so part of your life. Next day, this man sends me this video while coming to my post-op and is already seeing 2020 minus. So this is very important. Get addicted to how you change your patients' lives. Anybody can do a transplant. Anybody. Completely wrong concept. Another page. These are on cornea scars, which I call clown suit. These topographies look horrible, but it's not bad, actually, because you peel off the scar. Patients are 2020 underneath, as you see here. Right there. And this patient actually eight years later, when he came, he was 2020. Then eight years later, we did cataract. Again, premium length back to 2020. Maintain them for life. Here are patients who are sent to me. This is a patient from South Africa, uh, flown to me with severe nystagmus, uh, extremely high hyperopia, plus eight with high astigmatism, minus seven, and amblyopia, both eyes. And she's been told nothing can be done. Very young girl, wants to, wants to live her life, but nothing can be done. I don't take that nothing can be done. What do you think I first did? John. Refract. Refraction. Lovely, Refract. you got it. Lovely. So I do not care for the big stack of notes I was sent from South Africa. The doctors are visiting with her. I don't care. I first let the patient come in. They want to hug me, whatever. Then I start. Refraction. Because I don't believe anything. Refract. Refract to the patient down to 20, 30. Patient is also blown away crying because she can see. Nobody had gone that far because they believed the amblyopia that was in her notes for the last 10 years. You see how doctors just follow the previous notes, right? And Ms. Tagmus, you look at her, here's her video. Look at this young girl. Look at her, look at her with the glasses. How does she look? Do you get me? And they gave up because that's horrible. Please live with it. And plus Ms. Tagmus. So this instrument I had designed about 20 years ago with the Seco to hold the eye globe while doing laser vision surgery. So I use that for her, for her surgery, to keep the eye under control from her nystagmus. And we finish the surgery. Then what do my patients do? Can you see that? Yes? Please get addicted to these things. I don't care to show you a white paper that says vision improved 2020 minus. It could be a total lie. Patient could be out of the job with glares, halos, and nonsense. Look at the patient dancing. And this patient, by the way, has stayed back in the US for me because I couldn't do her second eye because of the COVID lockdown. So poor thing, she calls me every second week, doc, now, now. And I'm like, no, not yet. So she's in the US still for second eye. My point is, guys, please get addicted to the patient's reaction. You have freed a young girl. What does she want to do, you think, now? Wants to become a doctor. Another Black Hawk pilot sent with extremely bad scarring, 2200 vision, brought straight to 2020 with laser surgery. This patient is a kickboxer. That's a herpes scar of 12 diopter astigmatism. I said kickboxer, young girl. Remember, I never think transplant. Transplant, when I hear somebody did a corneal transplant, you know what I think? One, the doctor didn't have time to plan. Two, he doesn't care. So see how strong I think. Transplant, 22 minutes you can do a PKP. Do not do it ever unless you accept. I want that doctor who does transplant to accept defeat. I gave up. That's why I did a transplant, Dr. Palani. That's what I want to hear. So please raise the attitude. Doing a transplant is not heroic. It is absolutely giving up because these people can undergo laser plastic straight to vision. 
And again, watch the patient. So you see the change from astigmatism 12 to two adapters. Look at her cornea. Can you appreciate that? I had her photo here. She's a kickboxer. So me and her, she came to my office and we kickboxed and we took a picture of that, but it's not here. All right. You'll have seen RK cases, correct? All of you, RK, hex K, look at all these cuts. Doesn't matter, I've done up to 32 cuts. My point, what I tell surgeons when they come to me, Dr. Lani, how do we tackle these? I tell them, don't look at the cuts. So it's very provocative the way I teach. Don't look at the cuts and go into, oh, that surgeon was stupid and you are bad, Mrs. Smith. You shouldn't have had this surgery and I'm sorry. Oh, shut up. Let's get to work. What do you think I did first? John. Refraction. You got it. <laughs> Refract these people. Look at the hex K patient down with RK. Refracted that patient to 2040 and got to work. Brought them to 2025 uncorrected. The cornea still looks horrible. Doesn't matter. The bones are broken, but she's running in the Olympics. What is the function the patient came for? Doctor, I cannot walk. She did not say I came with scars, doctor. I can't see. So please talk in their currency. Jigsaw puzzle. This is very important. Patients, you see sometimes the RK, hex K, CKs, all the corneas are distorted. They're these like pieces are apart. And like, oh, let's do a transplant. No, you can actually put them together and do the laser. So you can see me here. I'm actually showing you corneas that are actually the whole pieces are improperly placed or very wrinkled together. This is RK. You can see the pieces are very badly wrinkled. These are causing eight, nine diopter astigmatism. That's why I don't look at topography. I refracted this patient. And my center is beautiful. So you can actually laser these patients. Put the pieces in place like a jigsaw puzzle laser. You'll be amazed. Your epithelium is the carpet that comes on top and makes them see. So I call all RK patients new carpet on broken tile. We'll keep going forward for the paucity of time. Again, see patient under the laser already seen. Can you see the white reflex under the laser? Here's a patient with a LASIK flap done three times over RK. See how the flap was bunched up. Just straight in the damn thing. No big deal. Get to work. Three Ruiz astigmatic keratotomy over RK. Ruiz is a step ladder cut. Here's a patient with CK done so many times, like cigarette butt burns on the cornea. Whole cornea distorted. Doesn't matter. Straighten the guys up. Go with the laser. You're concerned with central vision. I'm fine with the fact that some of the bones are broken. She's running in the Olympics. No pain. That's her function. All of them are seeing under the laser. Can you appreciate that? All of them. 100%. And every patient is recorded in my office. Patient coming out of the immediate out of laser. No pain. I kept it together. See what the patient says. And laser on top. New carpet over. Yeah, from the top. You see how the patient gets it? Very important. The patients understand you. That's amazing. So any level of RK scars can be corrected. Intacts. Many of you do this. I love these uh, technologies to stabilize my cornea. Again, a lot of talks about works, doesn't work. Here's what I say to people who say this doesn't work and that doesn't work. Every tennis racket works. How you play is how it works. It was made to work. No one made a technology for it to fail. It's how you use it. It's very important. So there are different ways we'll keep talking about how to use it. I think there's too much light behind oh, thank you so much. Okay. Then you apply this to deeper levels. ALK, if people know it was before LASIK, you know, we used to, uh, people used to do this. I never did the uh, lamella carot carot uh, carotectomy. Uh, you let the cornea bulge, ectasia. So these patients went into severe ectasia, the one-eyed patient, 10 diopter astigmatism reduced to 2.7. And you can see a topographic change straight to 2025. Patients who come to me with intacts done wrongly, you can laser them because they already have braces in the spine. Does that make sense? Oh, Dr. Gulani is a keratoconus. I understand, but it has rings in its place now. It's got nice strength. Do laser on top, correct them straight to zero, stigmatism, vision. This is how patient's vision improves. You can document it. Again, post-lasic ectasia, no big deal. Four and a half minute, put in the rings in the right place and you count the ectasia and corrected vision. Look at the uh, astigmatism here, 7.4. Patient straight to 2020. Here you can see how putting the rings in decreases keratometry 
and corrects or stabilizes the astigmatism for you to do laser or whatever after that. What do I do with patients like this? This was flown to me by, from uh, Spain. And uh, these rings, I'm like, Dr. Ghani, the ring is broken. What do we do? Patients disturb this, that, whatever. I'm like, okay, let's take a look. And when I look at this patient, what do you think I'm looking at? Refraction. Lovely, John. I don't care that the ring is broken. It's been broken for over a year. Do you see any reaction in the cornea? Zero. Do you see any scarring in the cornea? Zero. It's doing its job. The belt is torn, but it's holding the trousers very well. I'm fine. So only thing the doctor refused to understand is the patient had remaining astigmatism. What did I do? Laser correction. You got it. Three and a half minutes. And suddenly you look like a hero and the patient's surgeon who's been looking after the patient for nine years looks like lost. And I told them on the telephone, do this thing. It's no big deal. No doc, we are worried. The ring is broken. I must fly this patient to you. So are you getting my point here, guys? It's broken, but it's doing its job. Get the vision. People are missing. It's vision. It's not about look at that ring. Let me now do a heroic surgery and pull it out. That's what he wanted me to do. Answer is no. Vision. Now, that's the close-up picture. Again, broken doesn't matter to me. Then why did I take this patient with the scatter ring 360? You can see the whole ring from Egypt. Why did I correct this guy? Because he was left with nearsightedness and astigmatism, the most beautiful refractive error. So this patient had surgery in multiple countries. Uh, Dubai, California, Egypt, New York, um, multiple surgeries, lasers, Lasix, PRK, original ectasia, uh, then cross-linking, which I don't like cross-linking before you fix the cornea. If you cross-link the patient before you fix the shape, you just put cement on a bent back. You permanize the disability. Everybody clear with my concept here? So what did I do? Refracted him. I was thrilled he could come to 2030, coming from 2200. Patient stayed back. This is whole family was traveling with them. They had booked the whole hotel here and we did a surgery. Again, another patient who's waiting for COVID for a second eye. All these patients, have, this is a recent case, but I want to show you why here I attacked. I corrected it for that reason. You can even manipulate scars with rings. Let's go to another section now. This is again intact for LASIK ectasia, lamellar keratoplasty. A lot of you do this, correct? If you look at my 5S system, there's a place for keratoplasty cases. Again, never do a penetrating keratoplasty unless you show me a full dagger through and through inside the eye. And I'll say, okay, that was a good option. Otherwise, zero, zero. PKP should be zero. Lamellar techniques, please master these, posterior to anterior. I don't care what you call them, DMAC, DSEC. That's the whole point I don't like. People are having conferences on these things. Not important. Change that back layer, attack the front for vision. The front they're forgetting. All patients with this DMEX and DSEX and all are flying to me, miserable because they have a nice looking graft, but they're left with refractive error. Unacceptable. So even these DSEX surgeries that I do, I call them REFDEC, meaning refractively corrected surgery. So if you see here, this is lamellar keratoplasty, hand lamellar. This is refractive DSEX. When you do these surgeries, patients come out emetropic. And you can even do it with confidence in RK cases. This is day one, sutureless D second RK. So there is no limits because you understand principles. So none of these are train wrecks that you want to just stop. You are topping them. Imagine sutureless and RK flying next day, cornea is crystal clear, refractively emetropia, stability guaranteed, you're done. Let's take another case here, scenario. Epicarophakia train wreck. Epicarophakia, guys, for those of you who are recently born, in uh, over 30 years ago, when there were no intraocular lenses, the patient's cornea on top, we used, uh, not me, people used to freeze the cornea like a lens, a donor cornea, and put it on top of the cornea, epikeratophakia. And aphakic patients would see that way. Now, this patient had epikeratophakia over 25 years ago. You can see the decentered epikeratophakia with central scarring. What do you think I did? Get a damn for how it looks, start refracting. I see that she can improve to 2070, 2080 at the most because the whole EPIK was irregular, decentered, scarred. So my first reaction is my 5S system. I want to make the cornea clear and normal. Now, again, I don't like doctors calling things smile complication, lazy comp, as if something new. It's a corneal situation. So don't get scared. I think there's too much light behind me. Give me a second. Let me just move here. So... 
Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Okay, lovely. So if you look at this scenario, my whole point here was how can I normalize her cornea? If I can normalize the cornea, I can measure her and do something intelligent. So cornea, if you understand, lamella cornea never heals, never heals. So I found her APK area, lifted it off over 20 years later, it peeled off like yesterday. Below it, you can see a beautiful Bowman's membrane, let it heal with its epithelium, went in and put in a secondary lens, 2025. Now to you, it may sound like train wreck. Oh my God, what will I do? It's epikeratophakia complication. My God, no big deal. Three minutes surgery to peel off that corneal thing. Four minutes surgery to put a lens in with iridectomy. Are you guys with me yet? Yes? Yes, absolutely. Another epikeratophakia case here. Young man done with, by a brilliant surgeon up in New York many years ago. You see the epikeratophakia has a scar in the center, correct? And here's the patient left with a beautiful refractive error for me, high myopia with astigmatism. You know, when such a patient is flown to me, it's like someone giving me on a platter, two, three medals. It's like, here, Dr. Ghani, here's a medal for you for free. So I talked to the doctor. I said, doctor, it's a simple case. Do this, this, this. I said, no, no, no. It's epikerophakia scar. I've never, never seen this. And I've done 30,000 LASIK, but I've never seen this. And I keep saying, it's not new. It's a corneal situation. Now, how does my brain think? Remember, I said epikerophakia is cornea on a cornea. So here's what I tell the patient. So he must have been such a high myope because this was also done for myopic epikerophakia. He must have been such a high myope that they did that 25 years ago when there was no other way to do these or ICLs. So I told the patient, Mr. Smith, you have somebody else's cornea on your cornea and you're myopic with astigmatism and you have a scar. So the surgery I want to do on you is myopic surface surgery, which will get me my scar, decrease my K and get me hematropia four minutes. Here's the best part, Mr. Smith. I'm already working on someone else's cornea. It's not even your cornea. His thickness is 600 plus. Everybody understands why? Epikeratophakia, correct? So thickness is lots for me. I can easily go up to six diopters plus. So I treat it and I say, Mr. Smith, worst comes to worst, if it doesn't work, guess what? I just peel off that cornea and I put an ICL because now we have that technology in your thin cornea. How cool is that? If I had peeled off his cornea, he would be the minus 13 he was 30 years ago. Are you with me, everybody? So had I failed, my plan was ICL 2020, but peeling it off. But I worked on somebody else's cornea on this patient. How safe is that? 2025. Was that a train wreck to worry about? Epic care of figure out, I have to fly. No. Simple. It's a corneal situation. Excessive thickness. And you have high myopia to correct. What else do you want? It's a piece of cake. Excessively thick cornea and high myopia, guys. Anybody is, uh, is traumatized by that situation? It's a perfect scenario. It's a party time for you. Let's watch the time. Now, this is an epithelial ingrowth right here. We are 715 now. And what would you do? Again, I always think of my end point here. This patient is in the late 60s has had this growth for a long time. No doctor wants to enter. It's too much epi in growth. Then they're worried about what to do. Yes, it can be broken down, everything. I'm looking at her cataract. I'm thinking this lady has to see 2020. How do I get that? So my two, three, four rule, I wrote about 27 years ago for epi in growth. So I lift her flap, remove the scar, but I stitch it down because I see that the flap had, had inherent problems in the periphery, meaning the original surgery, there were issues which were never detected. Epithelium covered it. So I tacked it down. Now, how did I stitch it? If you see the hinge is nasal, those times the hinge used to be nasal. So you see my, my sutures are outside of the hinge. And I made it astigmatically neutral all throughout as I did it. So my suturing took me over 20 minutes because I wanted my reflex to say circle. Everybody with me? I left her alone for six months, started measuring stability. She was so stable that I could measure my cornea. So I went in. In fact, put in a toric premium lens, that level of confidence. Now, here's the best part. I hate stitches. All of you know it. But I've left it in because it's a stable cornea. Looks gorgeous. Lens is giving her 2020. Why would I bother? If I now remove the stitch, even if I induce a quarter adapter astigmatism, will I forgive myself? Are you guys with me? Yes? 
Again, you see the preparation. This is what I call GPS. It's called Nagolani planning system. Basically, how to plan the sequence. You cannot do wrong things and then keep doing surgery. If you had done cataract first in her, completely wrong because you're not measuring the lens correctly. You have to blame yourself. So you have first made the cornea measurable, stable, then go inside. It doesn't matter what complication they are train wreck they came with. Doesn't matter. So I call this auto flap tack down, basically. No big deal. Surgery took nearly 30 minutes, more for the stitching than doing anything else because I hate stitches in the corner. That's how she looks. Uh, smile, a lot of complication of smile I've been correcting now. We've crossed over 100 cases flown to me. And again, a surgery I don't believe is the future of evolution of refractive surgery. I call it an entertaining diversion. So many, many cases of these you can correct. Again, the surface techniques, a lot of these patients have not been told what to expect and the vision quality doesn't reach a point in many cases. Again, many patients do see well with this. It is an entertaining diversion, not the future of refractive surgery. Here's another patient cross-linking. I call that linking without thinking. The, one of the biggest causes now of poor vision and keratoconus is iatrogenic. Doctors linking every keratoconus patient. See my concept again. You're putting cement on a bent spine, keratoconus, and telling the patient, your spine won't bend anymore. See how smart I am. I'm doctor, I'm so smart. I'm not gonna let your spine bend anymore. Patient goes, thank you so much doctor, that's amazing. So my cone won't progress. Yes, you're right. Now one smart patient should ask this doctor, so doctor, won't you be then keeping my spine bent forever? I mean, isn't that stupid? Why won't you correct my spine first, then put cement? That's the point. Everybody with me? I'll stop for a second. Please absorb what I just said. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. How many of your doctors are just cross-linking every k corner patient? Think of it for a minute now. You're pouring cement, cross-linking on a bent cornea, keeping that patient now disabled for life. You didn't correct it. You just covered it. And now you put them in contact lenses and go, this is your destiny, your keratoconus. Here's a patient of mine. This is a very funny story. This patient actually lives in our backyard in Jacksonville. He flew to California, Miami, and Canada, got cross-linked three times. Got an ICL, again, wrong GPS. We put an ICL first and then started cross-linking and doing lasers and PTKs and everything. Completely destroyed. What do you think I started doing with him? Refraction. Are we guys clear? Doesn't matter how many surgeries he had. I hated the fact that he was cross-linked, but I was left with no options. So I still did laser and brought him to 2020, despite his ICL, multiple laser, PTK, PRKs, and uh, cross-linking many times to 2020. So that's the concept, correct it. Now, these are IOL cases in K-Conus. In select K-Conus, as I said, you can do surface surgery for all of them. Here's my way of doing GPS. This is a firefighter, keratoconus. Did laser, looked at stability, cross-linked him. Very young patient. So you keep him, and he's 2015. He keeps sending me photographs of doing his firefighter job at night. Again, patient. He recently sent me a picture that looks like a Rambo. I love it. It's on my Facebook. If you've seen our Facebook and stuff, my patients have written their stories, which is unheard of in medicine. But I, that is dangerous for me because it's the highest level of accountability your patients are writing, not you. If you write, it's advertising. Patients are writing, meaning how amazed are they? And also remember how hurt were they, that means, by people not correcting them. So trap. The only way I like cross-linking is to trap your work. After you've done a great job, trap it. This patient, again, six cross-linkings all over the world, with intacts, with scarred, young guy, 19 years old, left blind, 17 diopter astigmatism, totally blind, California, finally. Came in, moved his scar off, left his ring in, brought him to 2030 vision. No big deal. Phakic implants. This, this slide, please remember, all of you. A lot of patients, this is the second reason of patients flying to me, unsatisfied premium cataract surgery patients. Again, their doctors panic, they send it to me with doc, this is a train wreck, I put in a crystal lens or I put in a this technus, symphony, whatever. To me, I don't even listen to that part. What did you put in? I just want to know what happened to your recipe. So coming back to the point, don't be slaves to technology. Unleash technology, be a master. Think you're sitting on a wild horse and watch yourself on the wild horse looking amazing. Marlboro. You got it, guys? That's what I want eye surgeons to be. Marlboro, just stay there. That is very important because think you dominate technology, not the other way around. These lenses are ingredients. I even made a fun video for y'all. It's on my Facebook and everywhere. 
uh, during this COVID time of cooking. I showed you how to use different ingredients and different recipes. It's the recipe that matters. You can't put in a, a, a material that was FDA approved for coffee and put it in curry and go, it doesn't work. It wasn't supposed to work that way. Recipe. So plan the recipe, all of these lenses, you have to an analyze the patient's anatomy, physiology, optics, visual potential, four things. Every cataract patient of mine, I evaluate these four things. Till date, knock on wood, not had to change any lens or do any treatments on anybody. Very important point, please. Drive it home. Lenses are not magic, you are magic. Cataract surgery is not robotic, you are the artist. All these are ingredients. You're the guy on the horse holding the reins. Visualize that. So all this can be corrected. All these patients, you can correct them with laser, lenses, correct them, piggyback, whatever. Get them optically optimized. Come back to this case that we talked about, optical manipulation. All of you understood this. Here's a patient, dense central scar. Train wreck, Dr. Lani, train wreck. This is a scar. Severe astigmatism, irregular. Guys, a PhD, uh, rail keratotomy, scars, cataract, high astigmatism, irregular high hyperopia, very demanding. This patient had read everything I've ever written for the last 20 years. He came in citing my 5S system. Can you imagine? The doctors who were there again saying, Dr. Dhani, I wouldn't do this case. It's, the guy's very, I'm like, I would love to do this case. Only an artist can appreciate a Mona Lisa. So as doctors, there's another thing I like to teach. Don't get scared of somebody who's type A personality. You want that patient, a doc, patient. But that's the guy who's going to admire your work the most. You don't want someone. You know, how many talks have you all seen? Ideal patient for premium surgery. Someone who's dumb enough to not want everything perfect. That's a silly way of teaching. Why would you look for a patient to be dumb enough for you to do your surgery? Haven't you heard these talks many times? Patients should not be demanding. They should be easygoing. Should... Oh, come on, man. Either you're an artist or you're not an artist. Either you paint walls on the weekend or you make Mona Lisa frescoes. If you make frescoes, you want someone to admire it. Only artists will admire it. So go for patients who are type A. They are the ones who spread your names everywhere. Very important. This guy till today, till today, on one day before my birthday, always comes at 6 a.m., stands in my parking lot. He drives six hours and gives me a Don Perignon champagne. He always wants to be the first to wish me my birthday. Till date, in my parking lot, always first. So we clear this cornea with corneoplastic, measurable, Went in with toric lens with RK, 2020. This is the man. He knows every work of mine. He can cite. He just talks like a doctor. Very educated guy. So if you look up on top, up upper portion of the slide is what is wrong GPS. I was sent that patient having pseudophakia with scar left in the RK. Do I suggest that? Never. You cannot do cataract with an improper cornea. But I reversed him with laser and he's seeing excellent. But down, if you see, is my GPS patient, the one you just saw, straight to 2020. Patient with herpes, central scar with 13 diopter astigmatism, train rack doctor, what do we do? I don't care. Refracted him, did laser, brought him to 6.5 and 2030 vision. Stayed like that until he hit his cataract. Took him to cataract. Here's what I did now. He had also traumatic cataract, so his capsule was sublux. That's the only indication I like femto laser to plan it. Did femto just for that reason, removed his cataract, left him a fake kick because I still wasn't confident about his measurements. A fake kick. Next day, I measured, refracted him. One week later, I refracted him for intense work. Then go with so much confidence, put in a premium lens for him, bring them to 2025 vision. Remember, herpes scar, 13.5 adapter astigmatism, very educated guy from Atlanta, has seen every surgeon in the country, and we went staged. I made my work extensively difficult, but the result is my payback. I showed you alterism that day, remember? This patient came to me with severe granuloma. If you see the top, area right there. Stem cell deficiency, severe granuloma right there. Baseball professional, minus eight myopia, very thin cornea with keratoconus. I don't care. My aim now is, my Paris here is ICL, thin cornea K conus with minus eight myopia. I want 20-20 with ICL, but I cannot get there because I have this silly looking granuloma that doesn't let me measure. So I go to Iceland first. We do amniotic surgery heal him up completely, then put an ICL, 2020. Keratoconus with congenital cataract, high myopia, patient from Switzerland, put in an intact, then go in with a toric lens, see the stages two times, I made a comeback to the US. Again, you are the doctor, you do what is right for the patient, don't rush. That's that patient, you can even see the video. Again, no big deal. 
putting an intact ring, putting a lens in, all of you can do that. That's that concept. You can even play with toric lens, flip the axis, then come with laser to hit the scar. You see how I look at all surgery? Are you, are you with me right now? To me, all surgery is how I can optimize and manipulate the optics to fool the brain. My focus is the brain. That's what sees. How do I play with the optics to make everything in sync? The brain doesn't care how you did it. It just wants the optics. So here's another patient sent to me with severe ectasia with intacts and intacts wrongly done, laser straight to vision. This patient still brings all his uh, chicken. He's a very big restauranter here in town. Love it. Here's another patient, corneal scar, going into a lawsuit with their doctor, multifocal lens, multiple lasers, hyperopic at end point with scarring. What do I do? Clear the scar, make her measurable, put a piggyback lens in, get the vision back. Again, all of you can do this. Here's a patient, I, this was 12 surgeries sent to me, uh, completely depressed, patient extremely angry, broadcast, uh, news broadcast in New York. You can see multiple surgeries, ICL, PRK, PTK, cross-linking, keratoconus, uh, intacts, and now cataract. So what do I do again? Make him measurable. Then I attack. I want my vision. So I remove his ICL and his cataract, leave him aphakic. Wherever I'm very, very confused about measurement, and yet my GPS is correct, I take that additional work on me. And again, video, all of you know how to do these things, but just to show you. So here he is. I'm showing you all the things impacted here, getting his ICL out. Again, be atraumatic, be elegant, artistic. You don't want a stitch. You don't want a stitch. Cataract, aphakic. I've left the bag empty. Then I come back, see that I'm measuring them. And I always show you patients in between, very important. Are they comfortable? Are they happy? Came in and put the lens in, patient 2020. We back to our concept, stop the train wreck. Everybody clear? Yes? Yes, doctor. I'm on time. Questions? So what's your take on intraoperative abrometry? What do you mean? Uh, when you leave these patients aphakic and then do a refraction later, uh, yes. do you consider the option to do an intraoperative abrometry instead? You could. The accuracy of that is not yet potent. Because again, I see a lot of patients who are sent to me with all these technologies. Some of them are this uh, ORA, ORA techniques, et cetera, technologies. But there is nothing to beat this concept of mine when I'm not clear. I keep the patient aphakic. Very rarely, because you've seen I'm intense about refracting. Yes, if you have the technology, take that input. I don't think I have yet seen a patient flown to me who's been accurate with these surgeries with oral technologies with their doctors. So that's my answer. If you have it, use it. All these are data points. Again, please don't forget, all my patients go through extensive diagnostics. It's just that my reliability is my refraction. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on, please, anybody, give me your train wreck. So one question, Dr. Gulani. So uh, you deal with a lot of patients with high irregular astigmatism. Did I lose you? Yeah. Hello? Yes, Dr. Gulani, are what? you able to hear us? I can hear you now. You said I deal with high irregular astigmatism, what else? Yeah, so you deal with a lot of high irregular astigmatism patients who come to you like in the ages of like 18 or 20. So what do you think about amblyopia in these patients? Like, uh, because most of the time they're labeled as amblyopia and only with uh, contact lens correction, uh, we find some amount of improvement. Like, what, do you, what is your take on this? First of all, if I may use that same language, I don't even think about amblyopia. Here is why. My statements are very, very strong when I teach. It's not the patient's eye that is lazy, it's the doctor who's lazy. So see how I speak. Very important, please, with all due respects. I set about finding my own goals. I refuse to look at stacks. That's why it's a very big rule in my institute. Anybody refers a patient, we just ask for one page. I don't want to see OCTs and notes because notes, incidentally, carry on from the previous to the next doctor because nobody stops to check. So I do not believe in amblyopia until I am defeated in my refraction to get the patient to 2020. Have I answered your question? Yes, and for these kind of patients, uh, you do a contact lens refraction or a- Very good point. 
Excellent point. So no, I don't. I do a refraction myself, despite all the technologies and topographies and auto refs and auto refractors, everything. <clears throat> Those patients where you cannot refract them, as you saw in my corneal scar algorithm, I do a contact lens over refraction, not so much for the number, but so much to know the potential. You're very correct. So in amblyopia, I do go there too, because I want to know, I want to be defeated to know that I can write amblyopia in the chart. I do not accept it by somebody saying it. Even the patients who come to me, like all these patients, I showed you that lady 60 years where we did the intact with the uh, uh, toric lens in the hex K. She was labeled amblyopia for life with thyroid exophthalmopathy, nine things going on. I refuse to even look at it. Now that she's turning 25, how do you explain the amblyopia? My other point, we all know this with ICL technology. When we improve the vision to a certain point, especially on the nodal point of the eye, with any lens-based surgery, the magnification can also gain one line. So amblyopia itself should not be a roadblock for us to attack. That's the point. Perfect, yeah. So there's one question by Dr. April. Uh, so when you're saying you refracted a patient, what is being done? Is it auto-refraction or manifest? And if manifest, who does it? Doctor, I'll just show you a video. I do it. In my suit. Yeah. That's it. No way out. Your streak retinoscope. Okay. To be so a refractive surgeon. Must know how to refract. I just repeat it for you. I have every technology in the world probably nobody else has. I refuse to look at it until I have refracted the patient. Very important. Streak retinoscope. And you refract through keratoconus, through RK, through scars. Doesn't matter. In fact, these words, I have neglected and I have bombarded these words. There is no such thing as irregular cornea. There is no such thing as uh, nightmares. But I use these words only for communication because doctors somehow are addicted to using these words. Here's the problem. When you call something irregular, you yourself decrease your desire. Just look at it like a small dwarf. Don't look at it as giants, all these complications and, and difficult cases. Attack, you want 2020. So yes, refract yourself. Manifest. Hello? Hello? I'm sorry. So yes, uh, Dr. Gulani, yeah, we're back. Uh, question by Dr. Pratmesh. Uh, for the patient with herpetic scar, what was the refraction after laser? Very important point. Refraction after laser was minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, not important. I go by vision. Let me clarify for you again. Okay. I do not measure the suit after I have made it. I just look at the person wearing it and I'm thrilled. If there's a problem, I will refract that patient. Are you with me? If the patient landed at 2020 in his only seeing eye, with three children and his entire family dependent on him in a herpes central scar having been told no for the last eight years. Your success is the patient sending you a picture of boating on the river, going with his kids to the mountain and now becoming even somebody amazing in his company, recently getting this top professional award. He just sent me wine with his family's photo stuck on it. That is success. So you see how I'm taking you away from this Scientific, which to me is not real. Scientific is important for research level, but real patience is very important. Half the people on stage, their patients when they're sitting with me, I insist they must fly because I make sure they understand that what they're teaching is wrong. Cannot show you, here I'm doing this new surgery, stitching a lens and doing this in the eye and doing this, and the patient's not there. I want to see the patient during surgery talking to you. I've shown you those videos before. I want the patient immediately post-op hugging you. And I want the patient next day post-op dressed up to kill. It shows that they've regained their life. A scattergram can be fudged. You change your parameters, it can look good. In surgery, and this is an article coming out in Ophthalmology Times this month, I've said, show me the patients. So my answer to you, yes, you can refract and post-op. I do it, I'm not concerned about it because the vision is my parameter. That's why I showed you topographies too. Many topographies in these case post-op looks horrible. It doesn't matter. Patient's vision is 2020. That's the paradigm shift I want to take you to. Stop looking at numbers. Look at your patient. 
they come to you with one currency request vision, you give them the payment in the currency vision. Next question. Okay, so the next question by Dr. Saundra. Please explain the technique of in cornea laser. Uh, how does it differ from PTK? PTK is a brain dead procedure, so there's no comparison, please. Again, you're going into absolute baseline discussion. I already discussed this. Here's my definition of PTK. A surgeon who performs PTK is exposing the fact that they are optically negligent about the patient's refractive issues. Because if you do PTK, you're proving to me that you don't understand refractive surgery. Refractive surgery on the cornea depends on shape. Am I correct, doctor? Yeah. Yes? Very good. How then with PTK, when you're digging the cornea for a scar, are you helping vision? How many of your PTK patients are 20-20? Step. Doctor? Yeah, most of them, they don't see 20-20, agreed. Not agreed. My point is, it's criminal then, right? You took the patient, dug the scar, left them blind. What's the point? Patient does not come to you saying they have a scar. That's what you call it. Patient said, I can't see. When you do surgery in a refractive mode, doctor, you refract them through the scar, do a surface refractive surgery. These patients go straight to 2020. The welcome side effect is while you're doing that surgery, your scar is debulked and becomes more posterior. Optically, 28 years of experience, that doesn't matter. So you left the patient with a residual scar. In majority of the cases, crystal clear, you may leave them a residual scar. Vision's 2020, three and a half minute surgery. That's the direction, doing PTK. Anybody doing that or sends me notes, I immediately make my judgment on the doctor. This doctor doesn't understand refractive surgery. There's nothing wrong with doing PTK, but it's criminal that you miss the target. The patient did not say, remove my scar doctor and leave me blind, please. They didn't say that. They said, I can't see. Are you with me doctor? Exactly, exactly. Totally agree with you. <laughs> so it's, it's more of a personal satisfaction to take the scar out than to give a vision for the patient. Yes, yes. what I call that is I call that fixing the chart. <laughs> and if you see again, uh, my video and this article coming out in Ophthalmology Times, I call that man in the mirror. What does man in the mirror mean? People are stitching a suit looking at the reflection in the mirror. Topography. And the guy in front of the mirror is still wearing a baggy looking suit. Total failure. You get it? Therefore, the whole next discussion, I don't want to get into right now. I call them myth busters. I just, just did for European surgeons. I call them myth buster. Topo guided LASIK. There should be no such thing. It should be, if you're talking about that, you're talking like mirror guided tailoring. It's brain dead. Why won't you measure the guy in front of the mirror who's going to wear your suit? Refraction. There's only one thing. Can you tell me this, doctors? If I show you a topography, can you tell me the patient's vision? Definitely no. Lovely. So why are people chasing topography and smoothening? I have all oh, showed you that patient from Egypt, right? I got beautiful notes from uh, Norway. Beautiful notes. Guess what they said? Topo guided LASIK done. Topography, excellent improvement. Smooth cornea. Patient's vision is 2200. He's flying from Egypt to me for that reason. He's miserable. So your topo guided LASIK smoothened the cornea, improved the topography, but you failed to address the main issue. What is that issue? Vision. Are you guys getting me? Yeah, yeah, got you. Next question. Yeah, so the next question is from, uh, there are quite a few questions from Dr. Sanjit uh, Saha from Delhi. Uh, I think you know him personally. Uh, so he has asked, how do you play with the CFA and FDA approved and play your Gulani orchestra? So what's your way of time management in OPD with 100% self-doing refraction? Time management. Again, a wasteful word in the world of business. You know, you've got to ask yourself, and I've said this too in another seminar I just did. I'm just too many webinars I'm doing. Uh, I call it why, W-H-Y. You have to stop in the mirror and ask yourself, why am I doing what I do? First of all, no patient in my lobby, I don't have a waiting room because no one waits, everybody's on time. There's only one patient who can come to me per schedule. Either they came from the street or drove or flew 40,000 miles, one patient at a time. I see them for a full hour. I know their name for life. I call them at home, they have my cell phone. I refuse 
to rush. I refuse to accept mediocrity. I'm human, please. Yes, I can make a mistake. My consent forms are 18 pages of pure power. I may go blind, I can go blind, I will go blind. After they sign all that, I take them into my arms, then there is no turning back. So the integrity has to be extremely high, no fluff. My advertising is zero. So no fluff, no fooling around, pure results. Extremely difficult way of practicing because you have to perform on each patient. No one sends me patients because I send them wine or have lunch with them. Patients come because of, what do you call it, uh, performance. Very important. An additional problem, not problem, but the way I've decided to lead my life. All my patients are online, Facebook, social media. And if you notice, we are not writing. My institute doesn't write because we don't advertise. Patients are writing. Imagine the level of accountability. Each patient can write anything and you can trace each patient and ask questions. And God forbid, if my surgery doesn't work eight years later, they can still come back on social media and go, it doesn't work anymore. I have taken that risk because my mission is to empower our colleagues to stop letting you be slaves to technology. Worry about number of patients. Worry about what your uh, colleagues are doing in town. Envy. Worry about anxiety, what technology you have to buy and going home depressed and worried. Enjoy. This is vision. So I ask why. Why did you become a doctor? I do not want a waiting room. I don't like people waiting. I must personally see them. FDA, all the surgeries I do are FDA approved. It's the application. We call that off-label, correct? Application of FDA approved in a different scenario in the patient's best interest is called off-label. So if you use an intact in a patient of 20 diopter astigmatism, it's off-label, but the intact is FDA approved. Have I answered your question? Yes, doctor. So there's one other question from Dr. Priyanka. Uh, what would you suggest for a young patient with stage four keratoconus, if not keratoplasty? Again, see, if I may, uh, pardon me, but I try to break the back all this time. What is stage four? You don't give me any data. What is stage four? Tell me. All I want to know is refraction, vision potential. So give me that. What's the refraction? What's the vision potential? Doctor? Uh, yeah, uh, so Dr. Priyanka is not here. So yeah, or probably very advanced case. And like, if you have refracted him and if he's able to see 6-6, six, six, then you can go ahead with the correction, right? No, doc. Again, see, by calling it stage four, again, an academic, esoteric exercise of no intelligence as far as the patient's concerned. You have grade four keratoconus. Patient like, what the hell does that mean? Can you help me, doctor? So I want refraction. If you cannot refract the patient, see how I'm going this now, we're going a little longer because we don't have information. I look at the patient, she said in the thirties, I understand meaning it can change. Refract the patient first. If you can get a refraction, high myopic, ICL. If you can get high astigmatism, low myopia, laser. If you can go hyperopic with this patient, hyperopic refraction with astigmatism, you don't want to do those, you now go intact. You stabilize the cornea. Once you get a logical outcome, do laser on top. What I'm trying to say is, there are 28 different things for keratoconus. I call it think outside the cone. So a very important point here is not even what I'm gonna do is what I wanna stress here is stop calling it stage four. It scares you. Just look at the cone and go, let me define keratoconus for all of you very experienced doctors here. I don't even call it keratoconus. Keratoconus, what the hell does that mean? It's very scary, right? Here's keratoconus in my definition. A relatively thin cornea, with high keratometry, with ectatic contour, with most likely myopia with astigmatism, sometimes hyperopia. Can you defy my definition? Any of you? Can you put any keratoconus patient in this without my definition? Any of you, please, yes, no. No. But see, by <laughs> defining it this way, what have I done? I have made my elements very clear. Is it myopia, astigmatism, thin, ectatic, stable, not stable, scarred, not scarred? That's how I think. It's a piano. I want all my keys out. I don't call it, it's a confused piano. Now I'm confused. What do you do? Grade four. Oh my God, transplant, hard contact lens. Wrong. How can I correct these elements? Are you with me, everybody? Yeah, yeah, we are with you. So you see how we took keratoconus and even broke that into easily solvable puzzle. To me, the most exhausting part is my pre-op day when I make my plans. 
it is not the surgery day when I let anybody come in, news people, other doctors, because you have planned your orchestra and then you come in for that surgery. Right, so this was a very good question because typical what I see and don't like, calling keratoconus and other things, great for getting stuck with now, I have only two options for you, Mr. Smith, you're late, you came to me. No, no, no. How do I fix you? Next question. Uh, so what do you think about PRK versus LASIK? What do I think? What's the comparison? There's no comparison. One is a cutting technique, one is a non-cutting technique. LASIK is a refractive procedure to be done on normal corneas. PRK is the most amazing surgery, not as PRK, but the way I do it. Uh, it's the surgery that I absolutely believe is the future, surface laser surgery. There's no comparison again. You see, again, whoever asked this question didn't attend this webinar I spent so much time on. Do not talk like this. What do you think between this and this? There's no think. Each one is applied to a certain scenario which deserves it. You cannot think like this. You cannot give options. Mr. Smith, what do you want? This or this? You're the doctor. You decide the surgery. Do you want a non-cutting technique that will surface procedure that will help your keratometry, <clears throat> excuse me, correct the regularity of the cornea, give the patient mind-blowing vision, surface surgery. Do you want to do a simple surgery in a normal patient, basic myopic astigmatism, go to LASIK. There is no comparison. Totally different concepts. Okay, so that was the questions that we had, and uh, it was a gratitude message from Dr. Sanjit Saha. Uh, Post Cunningham, this was the best teaching he had. Um, <laughs> so, and he also had asked about amblyopia diagnosis and management your ways. So, my point again is, doctor, I don't believe in amblyopia, just don't call it that. Exactly. As I said to you, very important. I refract the patient till I start sweating. They are blown away because they've come to see this doctor from all over the world. And I, in my suit, am refracting them myself. So I, I again encourage you to see that portion video I showed you refracting the patient. And my attitude is, if I have to write amblyopia in the chart, it means I got defeated by the refraction. I take it that way. So my treatment for amblyopia is no different than my treatment for myopia. Huh. I want 2020. Exactly. I want 2020, unless I get defeated and someone really breaks me down, that's amblyopia. I feel bad about it because it's low, or it's lower the potential. It doesn't lower my desire. So doctors, the importance of these webinars, especially with you, when you're so experienced surgeons is, I really want you to change your mindsets. Just change it. You all can do these surgeries. They are very easy surgeries. Where I think everybody's missing it is they all are building these barriers that are paralyzing you and decreasing the patient expectation. Think the other way. People always think and are taught, and I'm, I hate it when I hear this from doctors, they teach these courses, how to select the right patient for your premium surgery. To me, it's brain dead. I mean, that's stupid. So you're telling doctors to look for a patient stupid enough so he can tolerate your mediocrity. Have you ever taken a patient who expects perfection and delivered beyond that? It's an addicting, addicting outcome. You'll want to do it again. That's my request to all of you. So in fact, go all the way. There's no such thing as a train wreck. Even routine patients, I don't like the word routine. Even a myopic patient who walks into my institute, in my brain, the 5S coin sorter, I still go through all my 40 techniques in my brain. What am I doing for this patient and why? Why did I in that care ring patient do laser while the broken ring left him alone? Why did I take that patient with nine complications and attack with two basic surgeries? Why couldn't anyone else think of it? Because your mind is now open. You are not worried about the nine things or what other people said. You attack. And the poor patient is confused because she was told no for 60 years. Correct? So it's amazing. Now, if you look at this talk from a business point of view, my advertising budget is zero. Perhaps the only practice on this planet with zero advertising, worldwide patients. How do you do it? I get that all the time. I say, I don't think about it. I don't really. I don't worry about my time. I'm not rushing to the next patient because I schedule myself. My staff has a schedule to follow. They cannot rush me. Any doctor who tells me I had 40 patients waiting, I'm like, who told them to wait? Does that make you feel good that you had 40 people waiting so it's great, you're a great surgeon? I think you failed. 
because you schedule patients in your institute. If you brought in 40 people and made them wait, you are wrong. You wasted their time. They dressed up. They made their son or daughter leave the work and drive to you. Why didn't you take them on time? So see, my attitude is totally different. And yes, leave at five. Go home to your family. Don't forget why you're doing this. And don't forget that you became a doctor to enjoy the outcomes. I keep asking this why, and this is important, it's a sidetrack, but if you guys are interested, I get this a lot from surgeons. When I, you know, they meet me at some party, Dr. Kalani, I have 10 practices, 100 employees, and um, I have this, and I go here, and I have to travel, and it's amazing, I, I'm building a lot of money, and after they're exhausted talking all that nonsense, I stop sipping my wine and I ask them, are you happy? Universally, universally, I see them stop, gulp, and wonder. And it's like I stunned them. And the answer is never I'm great and happy. It's always, oh my God, I wish. So if you wish, why don't you change that? You're a doctor. Imagine your IQ among everybody in college. That's why you went to med school. No one else could. Among medicine, your IQ was so high, you became an eye surgeon. How many medical doctors got that opportunity? Why are you miserable with patients waiting and rushing through and doing 20 cataract lists every day Know your patients by first name. Now understand, there are models of which Arvind is a world-renowned model. You have to do service and you're seeing these patients. That's fantastic. But decide what kind of practice you want to do. If you haven't decided and just running on the mill, oh, this new lens came in today. I have to use this because my other people in town are using it. Wrong. Evaluate it. I never did a crystal lens. Never. It's important. RK, Dr. Slava Fyodorov became very close to me, but I told him I'll never do RK because anatomically wrong. Today, that's the biggest practice I have of fixing RK. The uh, smile things, doctors who are doing it, nothing wrong with it, but it's not the future. Everybody who's doing smile, I get very clear about one thing, they don't know the future. It's a reaction of the industry to the weakness of a surgeon, making them buy a technology and do a surgery that really is not superior to surface laser surgery. How do I know? I'm the one fixing everyone's complications. So it's very important, guys. You all have very high IQ. You can't let somebody who was in one company one day and one company another tell you what's right for your practice. You sit down, remember, you topped all your exams. You have tremendous IQ. That's all my today's message is. Remember who you are. You are the rock star of your entire class. Out of 1,000, you entered medicine. Remember the celebrations your parents did. If today you're miserable because you're worried about who's doing what and what you have to rush and buy and, oh my God, it's getting late every night to me. Wrong. Shut your doors. This is a great time during your lockdown. Introspect. I just did a news article for PBS. I said, while you're locked in, look in. Look inside. Why are you doing this? Do you have time for your kids? Are you rushing around? Are you able to celebrate with your family? Are you able to inspire people? Is someone watching you saying, wow, I want to be a doctor like this? Or is someone watching you and going, oh my God, medicine's miserable. Look at how pathetic and how embarrassingly um, frustrated or stressed out this doctor is. So we're digressing a little, but that's the gist of today's talk. You are amazing. The surgeries I showed you, you can do. It's very simple. Stop and think. Stop and think. And then perform at such a level. You get addicted to your patients. If you cannot do that, you are living in fear because you know you're not perfecting vision. If your patient next day is hugging you, fully paid, here's my definition of success today. Fully paid patient, post-operatively, takes a selfie with you and posts it on their social media. That's the only mark of success today. Even while you're sleeping, your patients are online talking about you. Remember that. So times have changed for the better. Accountability is higher. Yes, we are all human. Mistakes are possible. But don't tell me you're not aiming for the sky. The sky is just a platform. No limits. All right, guys. I've got to go for my ocean swim. Any more questions? No, doctor. Thank you so much for this enlightening uh, life lesson as well. Uh, thank you once again. My pleasure again. Great to see you guys again. And again, any questions, go on these Social media, I'll have my team prepare for you, all right? Love you guys. Bye-bye.